Uh, some, of, some of the nurses looked like they were getting a bit ill, looking at what he was doing, and I thought he must be doing something horrible here, because he, they, you know, they're not used to it or something. I seen him go over to a black case and take out a hacksaw. He brought it straight over, and he started cutting my bone. Sunny's baby, he was born with one kilogram and now he's almost one and a half kilograms. His mother is a school girl. She was alone at home by the time she went into labor and delivered. So she delivered alone with nobody assisting her, nobody helping her. The baby fell on the, on the ground and the time he was brought here, he, was, he had soil all over his body, he was very cold. His mother at first did not accept him because of the poverty at home. If you took my mother's life, she had 16 children. She lost eight, but she had to carry on. That was, it was almost acceptable. The big thing was have children even if you drop dead in the process. Men had far too much power. And then the priests, you know yourself, like love, honor, and obey. And if you don't obey properly, a little clip does you no harm. He interfered constantly. I remember a young girl, she got out to walk and her feet were going the wrong way. If you're not financially stable, they don't treat your patient well. But when you're financially stable, under all circumstances, your patient is well catered for. Some of the stories that came out from the women that, you know, uh, some were outright saying that we felt that you were treated very badly by, by some of the uh, healthcare providers in terms of, you know, being even pinched uh, during labor. Uh, you know, being somewhat saying physical slapping, you know, being told to shut up, uh, uh, don't scream. We did not tell you to to act to get pregnant. I didn't know. I had no clue what was happening. I didn't know nothing. This strange man was. I never met him. Never saw him in my life before. Down the end of the bed, he started. They saw my bone, and I started screaming. The place down, and he turned around. He said, told me to shut up and stay quiet and I was being held down in the bed by two nurses and as soon as he'd finished breaking the bone, <clears throat> he just walked away, said nothing. Thank you, Lieutenant Corley. Uh, at the outset, I would like to start explaining to the Doyle precisely what symphysiotomy is. The Vatican issued an encyclical in 1931 clearly saying mothers who die in childbirth are martyrs and should be happy to serve as such. The operation was performed under local anaesthetic uh, not a general anaesthetic and uh, afterwards they were still in labour and there was still a baby to be pushed out so there was the agony of pushing out that baby uh, on an unhinged pelvis. It's, it's a very shameful episode and to date we still haven't got any redress for these women. I would hate to think that the strategy of the department is to weather it out until all of them die. The status of a woman is not that good. We are kind of trodden down. I'm learned and I couldn't even ask. I couldn't even ask the doctor uh, or the nurse, why, why do you have to do this and why do you have to do it more than once? So I'm wondering for the woman down there who's, who's illiterate, they would not probably ask. They would not ask any any, any question, any intrusion on their on their on their on their part. She's saying she she'll have to go by foot now back home 
because she has no money. Okay, she was brought by a good Samaritan on a lift, but now she has money. She has no money for the bus. She has no money for the um, motorbike. So she'll have to go on foot unless something happens that she doesn't know.